Welcome to the 2020 ASHP Foundation Literature Awards presentation with your host, Kelly Smith. Thank you for joining us for the 2020 ASHP Foundation Literature Awards presentation. My name is Kelly Smith, and I have the pleasure of serving on the ASHP Foundation Board of Directors. Today, we recognize those who exemplify excellence in research and recognize original, significant contributions to biomedical literature that impact pharmacy practice. Our first award celebrates the lifetime achievements of a pharmacist with 20 or more years of experience publishing impactful peer-reviewed literature. The award recognizes the accomplishments of those whose research career has advanced pharmacy practice and patient care. Let's meet this year's Literature Awardee for Sustained Contributions. The 2020 Literature Award for Sustained Contributions goes to Michael Reed, Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine, Cleveland, Ohio. Congratulations, Michael. Well, thank you very much, Kelly. I want to thank the ASHP Foundation for bestowing upon me this most prestigious award. In reviewing the list of previous awardees of this award, all highly accomplished individuals, it is a true honor for me to receive this award and I'm humbled to be considered in their company. The body of work recognized by this award was not produced by me alone. I was extremely fortunate to be just one component of a special team of highly competent professionals, each an expert in their respective areas, all working together as a symbiotic group producing synergistic results. I would like to acknowledge a few of my team members. Two individuals who have passed, Drs. Jeffrey Blummer and Toyoko Yamashita. Other colleagues included Dr. Carolyn Myers, Anita Pettigrew, Wes Gray, Dr. Marianne O'Reardon, Mary Thomas, and many highly competent pediatric trained bedside focused research nurses. And lastly, the director of my nursing corps, Eloise Lemon. I want to thank the ASHP Foundation very much again for this most prestigious award. I know you, and you mentioned, you've worked across disciplines in your research career. How did you get your start partnering with physicians and other colleagues? I firmly believe that all members of the healthcare team, physicians, nurses, uh, nutritionists, uh, respiratory therapists, the entire spectrum, um, not just pharmacists, nurses, and physicians, all have talents and, and, and brought together leads to synergistic um, outcomes. And it also comes down to the, the question. The best clinical research question, in my opinion, is the one that arises at the bedside with the patient or series of patients. Um, and there are so many avenues to perform research to possibly make things better that anyone who does what we do will be interested in contributing and joining in. And lastly, I'd say, as I, as I mentioned somewhat before, each member of the healthcare team has a unique and important contribution to make to the uh, care of patients. And each one of us brings a different, oftentimes fresh perspective to a specific problem. You've had a number of these incredible collaborations over your career. I'm wondering, uh, does any particular one or a few stand out for you? One of my early areas of research interest uh, was the treatment of bacterial meningitis. That was a, a relatively common 
infectious disease um, of infants and children generally under the age of uh, eight years of age that oftentimes could lead to serious morbidities and even sometimes death. And the therapeutics that we had were just okay. And new agents were coming along. And which ones could we look at? And we had the opportunity to study some of those new drugs. And just a simple finding that this one drug actually got into the central nervous system was able to effectively eradicate the pathogens, minimizing the cytokine storm, led to a tremendous change in how we moved forward um, in treating those patients. But I could go back and, and look at a lot of, of drugs that I studied, many out of the interest to studying the disposition of those drugs in children across different ages to give us insight into how the children at different age groups across that pediatric spectrum, how they handle drugs. How should we be dosing those drugs differently from a premature infant to a full-term infant to a child, an adolescent? So uh, there are a number of drugs that I can reflect back on that I used as my probes, my tools to define how would, could we best optimize drug dosing, um, regardless of what drug it was, to achieve the, the best pharmacodynamic effect we could. And, and I guess reflecting back, uh, I would hope that I contributed somewhat to the better understanding of optimal dosing strategies across that pediatric age spectrum. Well, Michael, I think what you said there clearly uh, emphasizes this impact on pharmacy practice um, and pharmacodynamics and how they shape drug uh, dosing in pediatric patients. Um, I wonder, based upon your career and, and your experiences, uh, do you have any tips or guidance you'd give to the, a new pharmacy researcher? Question everything. Don't take anything for granted. It's what are those challenges that we're confronting every day, and with the simple question, can we in fact do it better? And not just accepting how we do it now. The beauty of research is if it is done properly with thought and planning and commitment, and you do it without bias, as I've mentioned throughout our, our brief discussion today, um, we will usually determine some next steps. The other beauty of research is we often don't know what those next steps are going to be until we're done with the research. Well, thank you for always moving the paradigm forward. And um, on behalf of the ASHP Foundation, congratulations. Um, we're not, we don't have a biased thought. We know for sure uh, that you have made an impact, and we are so very grateful, and so are our patients. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. And I, I truly appreciate this. This is a very prestigious award and I am truly humbled. Our Innovation in Pharmacy Practice Award recognizes noteworthy articles describing an innovation in pharmacy practice in hospitals or health systems and serves as a model of how such innovations improve patient care. The 2020 Innovation in Pharmacy Practice Literature Award goes to Chantelle A. Blyler and her co-authors for their article, Sustainability of Blood Pressure Reduction in Black Barbershops. Congratulations, Adair. Thank you so much. Our team is uh, absolutely delighted to accept this award um, and can't thank the foundation enough for this recognition. Um, we'd like to dedicate this to our principal investigator, Dr. Ronald Victor, who passed away in September of 2018 after a 14-month battle with pancreatic cancer. Um, Dr. Victor was a tremendous leader, uh, a wonderful colleague and mentor. And uh, as a cardiologist and hypertension researcher, he spent years 
uh, working to improve care for underserved populations in both Dallas and Los Angeles. And I think the uh, Los Angeles Barbershop Blood Pressure Study uh, was really the culmination of those efforts. And I think it's fair to say he would feel was one of his greatest accomplishments. Um, Thank you, Adair. Um, your research uh, really reached an underserved group by going into the community. I'm wondering how you and the team chose barbershops uh, for the intervention site. Yeah, great question. Um, I think before I can answer that, I probably have to state the problem here. Um, so non-Hispanic Black men have the highest prevalence of hypertension and the highest rates of hypertension-related um, disability and death of any racial, ethnic, or sex group. Non-Hispanic Black women uh, have the next highest prevalence, but they have far more contact uh, with the medical community than do Black men. What it boils down to is uh, barbershops are a highly frequented social hub, and barbers are highly respected and, more importantly, trusted uh, individuals. And this is particularly important in a community in which uh, distrust of the medical establishment is commonplace. Um, in the Los Angeles Barbershop Study, uh, our average participant reported having gone to the same barber every two weeks for a decade. It's really tremendously loyal patronage, and it helped facilitate the frequent follow-up which was necessary to achieve such impressive blood pressure outcomes. Thank you for continuing to remind us how important it is to uh, meet people where they are and, and to build and establish those relationships there. Um, we uh, wish to congratulate you um, on this award and um, the great and important work you've been doing as a pharmacist uh, in this domain. Uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Our next award recognizes research that addresses the therapeutic uses of medications. This award celebrates an exceptional article and highlights research that influences optimal medication use. The 2020 Drug Therapy Research Literature Award goes to Katie Suda and her co-authors for their article, Assessment of the Appropriateness of Antibiotic Prescriptions for Infection Prophylaxis Before Dental Procedures, 2011 to 2015. Congratulations, Katie. Thank you, Dr. Smith. And thank you to the ASHP Foundation for this award. I am grateful for the backing from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, especially the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, for funding my R01, which supported this research, and for funding other PharmDs as principal investigators of federal grants. I also want to acknowledge my talented study team, pharmacist and biostatistician, Dr. Gregory Caleb, physician and my graduate student, Dr. Ji Feng Cho, Dentist, Dr. Susan Rowan. ID pharmacist, Dr. Alan Gross. ID physician, Dr. Ron Hershow. And my epidemiologist, Dr. Jacina McGregor and Dr. Charles Nika Evans. I also want to thank my husband for supporting me, even though I spent weekend after weekend writing grants. And who held down the fort while I was frequently away presenting my research. He misses those trips right now. Thank you again. Well, congratulations, Katie. Thank um, you. The work that you and your, your team have done is, is, is certainly one that resonates now. Antibiotic stewardship is a priority really for all of healthcare. Uh, for our frontline pharmacy workforce, what does this research and your findings, what does it mean to their practice? For acute care pharmacists, Phar these pharmacists are so important to continue the messaging and the strategies that were implemented by the antimicrobial stewardship team. This includes ensuring that antibiotics are prescribed appropriately per the, their institution's criteria for use. And also to take the opportunity to review culture and sensitivity testing to be just one more check of appropriateness of that antibiotic. Well, Katie, that was very well said and reflective of the passion and the inspiration you have for what you do. Um, thank you for that, and congratulations again to you and your team for quite an impressive accomplishment. Thank you so much for the recognition. 
Our final award recognizes an exceptional published research paper by a pharmacy student that describes a research project related to medication use and advances patient care and pharmacy practice. The 2020 Student Research Literature Award goes to Marissa Powell and her co-authors for their article, Assessment of Opioid Cross-Reactivity and Provider Perceptions in Hospitalized Patients with Reported Opioid Allergies. Congratulations, Marissa. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Marissa Powell, and I'm a current PGY-1 resident at the University of Colorado Hospital. I am honored to have been awarded the 2020 ASHP Foundation Student Research Award for my work on opioid allergies completed during my time as a student at the University of Colorado Skaggs School of Pharmacy. I want to extend a huge thank you to my excellent preceptors, Dr. Paul Reynolds and Dr. Scott Miller, who are critical care pharmacists at the University of Colorado Hospital. I also want to thank ASHP Foundation for presenting me with this award which is a kind gesture towards recognition of our hard work on this project and provides motivation for future research throughout my career. Thank you all again for this amazing opportunity. Well, Marissa, um, we're, we're quite proud of you and um, we're curious, I'm curious certainly, um, you've had a great early win in your career already. So what's next for you in research? Any ideas? Um, well, I intend for research to always play a strong role in my career, uh, hopefully with a heavy emphasis on cancer research as oncology is my specialty area of interest. Uh, this year, my primary residency project is looking at renal adverse effects associated with the use of osimertinib for non-small cell lung cancer patients. And my MUE project is investigating the appropriateness of isobuconazole use in solid organ transplant and hematopoietic stem cell transplant patients. I'm additionally involved in a meta-analysis and a case report project to further expand my research skills throughout my PGY one year. On behalf of the ASHP Foundation, um, it's my privilege again to congratulate you on a very well-deserved award. Thank you so much. Congratulations to all of our awardees and thank you for joining us to honor these exceptional individuals and their research that advances optimal medication use in pharmacy practice.